Uh, I play Oswald Alving, the son of Mrs. Alving. Uh, I've been living in Paris for a number of years as a painter, and the play begins the day after I've returned home for the inauguration of my father's uh, memorial orphanage. Um, but as the play unfolds, we sort of learn that there's more to it than that. I'm playing Regina Engstrand. Uh, she's the maid to Mrs. Alving, and she has a huge crush on Oswald. This idea that's talked about a lot in the play, which is about the joy of life, well, that's the way that Amon's um, translated it in his adaptation, uh, which comes from his Danish word, which essentially means life full. And that's something that Oswald is very um, a attached to. It's sort of his motto, really. And for somebody who's sitting alone in a foggy, misty, rainy, encroached by a fjord, mountains on either side, but it is a time when you can get books and people are starting to write about this and suddenly the only stimulation is you actually open a book and people are actually starting to talk about the things that have been rumbling around alone in, in someone's mind. I get the joy out of getting, trying to get what I want. I have a lot of fun little moments and I'm playing all these different versions of Regina. She doesn't know who she is. She's also in love, and she's very excited that Oswald is home. I mean, there's also a big statement being made in the play just about how that the kind of rigid, old-fashioned, fundamental social mores that push people into uh, uh, denial, self-denial, into toxic marriages, into all that, 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 that actually doesn't work. And yet the flip side of it is, is that if you take away all the structures, all the architecture around your kind of community and just live for pleasure, where do you end up? Probably 2017. I can't describe Ibsen. It's, it's so odd. It's like he's in the room. It's very, it's very different. But a lot of people I've talked to when I've said I'm going to do ghosts. They go, oh, tricky play. I was petrified. <laughs> I was like, it's period. I don't know whether I could do this. I knew Pam was doing it. And so I read it with her in mind. And I thought it was wonderful. It was touching. It brought me back to thinking about what I've discovered growing up as well and what the family secrets are after many years. And it just so happens to be a line in the sand between old styles of storytelling and classical drama and modern theatre writing as we know it. They, they, they get very adept at expressing themselves very fluently with ideas, they're forming arguments, they're using their brains and pushing their feelings down all the time and then occasionally Ibsen will just suddenly leave them alone. This kind of play in this world is so Eamon's world. He did such a wonderful job with The Glass Menagerie that there's this ickiness about it. And I think with Flacky, he's so good at creating that weird magic tension throughout the play. And I think that is the ghost in this play. Eamon is, I think, really caught beautifully uh, the kind of jagged, broken sentences of Ibsen. People are uh, either struggling to express something that they cannot find words for, but more often than not, something is rumbling and wanting to erupt, and they put a cap on it. So I think there's kind of universal human experiences in there about family and about love and about history and about inheritance and about sickness and health uh, that ultimately ring true across time, I think. And you sort of feel this divide between something that's sort of epic in the Shakespearean sense and then suddenly just teetering on the edge of something incredibly modern. You, and you, you feel as you sit in it how this is the beginning of 20th century soap opera in real modern writing.